boxer, 31-year-old Frank Sanchez, 22-0 with 15 KOs, the native of Cuba. And he welcomes right. Scott Alexander, who's seen ring time fair. with a ton of names you'd know ball. well, a seasoned veteran. But let's see if Sanchez, Luke, can survive in advance potentially into a big opportunity. Now let me ask you a question, because this is the second preliminary fight that I alone have called about Frank Sanchez since the F.A. Ajagba fight. Which happened on a pay-per-view's featured spot. So, so again, I want to be very clear. Frank Sanchez is a great talent. I'm delighted to call his fight. But for folks who might be wondering, why isn't he taking on necessarily more well-known opposition? What's the best explanation that you might have? It's hard to say. I mean, he, we saw him in that step-up opportunity there against a, a Jogba, scored a 10-round show. A he looked good. He dropped decision, him. Looked fantastic. Obviously trying to get the right dates and the right opportunities to advance him into his career. It's been somewhat of a slow build, but only 31 years old. We know the old adage about how heavyweights age. See what he does here against the tested Scott Alexander, but I don't know the, the true answer, but I do know what he's put together in the body of work. He's going to get a phone call soon. For yeah, I mean, I don't know, by the way, I don't know how long this fight is going to go. Frank Sanchez is an excellent fighter. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, obviously, his opponent here, Scott Alexander, is terribly overmatched, which, of course, that's on paper. We'll see in the end what it ends up looking like. And I think, of course, he might put up a better test than some of the folks might imagine. Frank Sanchez will be careful. But I saw him in his last contest, BC, against Daniel Martz. And Frank Sanchez ran over him completely, stopping him at a minute 40 into the first round. Couldn't miss. Couldn't miss with anything he was throwing. So when the Cuban flash is moving downhill on guys, it doesn't take very long. I can Absolutely. say that with confidence. Six foot four. A Cuban amateur background, but he also can let his hands go here on a heavyweight level. And he's got great hand speed, great accuracy, great shot selection. Like his ability to make calculated but quick athletic decisions, very, very good for a heavyweight. Very good. Sanchez snapping a five-month layoff tonight from that first-round knockout win last time out. And he does have victories over a notable names of heavyweights, not just a Jogba, Maggie Aguilera, Christian Hammer. Knocked out Carlos Negron in 2022. Getting the, the better of Scott Alexander Ooh. here early on. And as you can see, BC funneling him to his right hand so that he can make him run into his own punches. Oh! He gets drilled with a huge right hand! Alexander putting Sanchez on skates. This is why you don't win fights on paper. Can Alexander continue the offense to force the upset? Sanchez got way too comfortable, and Alexander popped him something good. You never know what can happen in heavyweight boxing. I spoke too soon, did I not? Woo. Coming up on 20 seconds to go, you see Sanchez holding. Certainly got his bell rung in the opening round. And that's the most consequential punch that anyone's landed in this. And I got to tell you, Sanchez might be still hurt. He is collar tying and overhooking. With all his might. 34-year-old Scott Alexander. This is the beginning of a special night. One round in the books, but let's watch the body language closely of one Frank Sanchez in the corner. That's Scott Alexander, 34 years old from Los Angeles, and here's the punch. No, he hit him with a beautiful right hand. That was nice. It's up against the ropes. It's an early right hand from Sanchez. There's this is it right me. here. Oh, it's a short right hand. He had his hand down after pushing him off to reset the distance. Didn't bring it back up and paid for it. Great, great awareness by Scott Alexander. And how about the chin there on Sanchez? That's the type of punch you see how violently Sanchez's head was turned to the side. That for can, sure. That can knock down or knock out most heavyweights. And I, I, I'm going to give that first round to Alexander. Obviously, he got hit with some big shots too. But the biggest shot of them all was the one he landed. Hoisted by my own petard. Alexander snapping a 13-month layoff tonight, but you wouldn't know it from that onslaught in round one. Onslaught, excuse me. New to this language. And Alexander's been in with big names. He got stopped by Jean Gillet. Oh, oh. right hand. And there's now your answer. Got, WC, he partly got knocked off balance there. See how... 
Alexander, see if he has his legs under him, beats the standing eight count there from referee Robert Hoyle, but what an answer from Sanchez. Big time. Now, again, I do think that was partly either a flash knockdown or maybe he lost his balance, but the referee counted it. It's going to make the scoring here right away turn into Sanchez's favor starting in round two. I was mentioning that Alexander was stopped in the first round last year by Zhang Jalel, who went on to beat Joe Joyce by knockout twice right. and has set himself up for a monster fight in this division. Yeah, Sanchez trying to use his reflexes, trying to hit a pull-two counter. Didn't quite get it off. Both heavyweights have landed big, got the attention of their opponent. I wonder, though, if Sanchez is his own bell, is it still rung a little bit from that shot in round oh, one? Two hard right hands, one in uppercut floor Alexander, but they clinch. One of those might have helped him stay on his feet, to be honest. Sanchez, by the way, a noticeable difference in his favor in hand speed, BC. His combinations are finding the mark before Alexander can even get to his next punch. They don't call him the Cuban Flash for nothing. And then you have to give him credit here. He got rocked, meaning Sanchez in that opening round, to come right back with smart, aggressive, effective punching to not only drop Alexander, but have him hurt here, it seems, as Sanchez stalks him into the corner. And again, funneling him over to his right side. So he's going to move into you Sanchez's see, power. Did you see a little hesitancy of Sanchez to engage against the ropes, considering that's where that big punch came from? In Maybe round a little one? bit, yep. Not, not getting too reckless with it. Not without Alexander opening up first. Good body shot from Sanchez with the left hand. Well, look, we said off the top, you know, is this a, a setup for Sanchez to roll through and look great and stay busy ahead of a big fight? You never know what's going to happen when heavyweights put on those gloves and you have to like, at the very least, Team Sanchez wouldn't have preferred the way this fight had started, but the reaction has been very mature and very strong and violent here. Nice right hand on the uppercut from Sanchez. Also, if you're just Team Sanchez, his last fight against Daniel Martz, the one I called, he just didn't even get any work. It was over before it got started. This is him having to do some work. This is him having to problem solve which will be a good thing to take into whatever opportunity is next. An eventful opening two rounds here in this 10-round heavyweight tilt. Let's look back on this round two action. Ah, he stepped on his foot perhaps. Yes, and that's may have what sent him back. Less so the punch taking him off of his feet in that way. I understand why Alexander protested that. That's a nice right hand. Two good right hands coming underneath the left of Alexander, and then clinching up, not not giving away any extra space there. Good job by Sanchez. Well, the box score will say knockdown nonetheless, as Sanchez answering, and I think he needed that from the standpoint of, of confidence, from the standpoint of reestablishing himself here, potentially as the more dominant fighter, and he had a very good round start to finish, did Sanchez. You know, I'm a big believer in instant replay. I don't think combat sports uses it enough. I know different states, different jurisdictions. Because it's efficient and timing, I mean. You know? There's no reason why that knockdown couldn't have been overruled by an officiating crew watching sidelines. As long as we're not taking 10 minutes out no. with somebody underneath the towel over a camera. and we're Look, boxing, you got to get back into the action here. Uh, I've, all, I, I've long believed that it should be two referees working any particular fight. One in the ring itself. One at the ready on standby at the outside. Wow. Um, especially for commissions like Nevada that have the money to use these kinds of resources. Obviously, a lot of states are not going to be in that kind Sanchez of Sanchez teeing off along the ropes here against Kind of holding the head a little bit. Yeah, the referee warns him. You can't do that. Robert Hoyle, a veteran judge and referee here in the state of Nevada. Or Nevada as the local resident. They get say. bitter when you say Nevada. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm trying to say your state name fancy. With right hands from Sanchez. Oh. Just teeing off, holding with the left. Landing with the right. I'll tell you what, if Alexander doesn't get off the ropes. He might warn him here. He might take a point. So that's two warnings now for Sanchez for holding the head. He might he might get a point taken if he does it again. I was going to say, Alexander does have to be careful. You don't want to linger too long on the ropes. Even if you're covering up with, with punches coming at you, some referees will stop it thinking you're under duress. 
Some blood looks like it's beginning to flow from the nose of Alexander. I'll tell you what, Sanchez doesn't seem too bothered by whatever pop Alexander has, despite that big punch in round one that woke us all up. Mm. They do have a common opponent, these two, in Carlos Negron. Sanchez knocked him out. Alexander went the distance and a decision defeat. And also, if you're Sanchez, now you're an interesting part in the fight. It's the third round, and your opponent is not exactly trying to win. Not this round, anyway. So they're going to be inherently defensive. Something what they might call in soccer, parking the bus. Looks like he might be parking the bus a little bit, which means it's going to take Sanchez a little bit of careful application of pressure to find the right opening. Well, to answer your earlier question, and some to regard about Frank Chan Sanchez's schedule, he is trained now, of course, by Eddie Reynoso, Team Canelo. He was in training camp with Canelo Alvarez and Lake Tahoe. So you can understand the synergy of him probably just wanting to be on this card sure, sure. in the camp at the same time as the Mexican icon. But Eddie Reynoso, uh, no slouch when we talk about the, the debate of who are the best coaches in boxing today. Right up there. Maybe he'll win it one the, this next year. Maybe he won't. But he's going to be in contention for it for a long time. Ooh. Great jab there from Sanchez right before the final bell. Bloodied the nose of Alexander did Sanchez there in round three. As you see Eddie Reynoso there with the back to the camera. Lead trainer of, of Team Canelo since day one. Since the beginning back in Guadalajara. And we've seen some big names come in and out of that camp in recent years. The Ryan Garcias, the, the Andy Ruizes, mm -hmm. Oscar Valdez. And there's Scott Alexander. What type of magic does the native of L.A. have left after that big shot off the ropes? Which dropped Sanchez in the opening round. Did, 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 did which, drop which, him, but it visibly rocked Visibly him. got his attention and let him know. And probably, like I mentioned, could have or should have dropped most fighters with how much, how violently Sanchez's head was turned there. But a nice recovery as we head here into round four. Scheduled for 10. I will say, if Alexander doesn't come back with something offensive of note this round, he could spend a lot of this with his back to the ropes. Or just in these clinch positions. Let's see how Sanchez picks this lock. Backing him up. Underhook's the left side. Shallow underhook, so he's not going to turn him. Yep, he's going to elbow block and then re there you go. Slow pace here in round four. Sanchez just doesn't want to make that mistake again, right? So he prefers to fight Alexander in the center of the ring. He gets backed up rather easily to the to the rope line, BC. Now he's in the ring post. Now, that was about, just about to say, now it's time to go. See Sanchez looking at referee Robert Hoyle almost saying, are you going to can you call the stop from the break here or are you going to let him clinch me? Oh. <laughs> Sanchez just missing on that counter right hand shot. Sanchez has an interesting guard. He's got a bit of a crossing guard with like a half shoulder roll with it as well. It's really interesting. He's got that lead left shoulder a little bit closer to his ear at times and then kind of rolls off a little bit. A bit unusual for a heavyweight. See that? He has a bit of a crossing of the arms like that. 
A bit almost like the 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 turtle guard of a Joe Frazier. Rich, I'm gonna say Frazier Foreman. Frazier was famous for it again. His but his was different than this one. See that using that lead shoulder, almost like a it's kind of like a, a you know a one quarter maybe one third Philly shell ish. We'll say Frank Sanchez looks content to try to outbox Alexander even in these potentially dominant positions in the corner. I don't see him going for the finish like he did in rounds two and three at times. Right, but what's Alexander doing? Surviving. Right. You're saying he needs a he needs a dance partner. I mean, I, I think he's just doing oh two hard Big right, right cross. hands. Somehow oh, Alexander's wow. still on his feet. Hoyle looking in close. Oh my goodness, he is lucky to escape. Sa Sanchez was pressing him with his lead hand. Pushing him into the ropes, so then he's bouncing and into the punch. And that'll do it. Yeah. Referee Robert Hoyle leaving off the fight at the conclusion of round four. A stoppage victory for unbeaten, rising contender Frank Sanchez. But Luke Thomas, not without a little drama on the way there. Let's see this final finish here. He gets him with the jab, stops him and freezes him. Uses that. Look at that frame. He's going to push him into the ropes with the left. Watch, push, bang, right behind it. So that his he ricochets into the punch. It not only holds him there, it ricochets him back up. By the way, I am totally okay with the stoppage. Was it the corner well, or was what, it the What rep? I'm trying to jump in and tell you is that the corner was waving off the fight during this oh. sequence from, from Frank Sanchez. Referee Robert Hoyle didn't notice them because he's focusing certainly on the reaction from Alexander. But in the final seconds, you may be able to see it from this view, the corner of Alexander had seen enough. Yes, I see it now. Sending the commission member with the towel to the ropes. Uh, by the way, I commend Alexander's corner for stopping it. He did not need to take any more punishment. Frank Sanchez is a very talented guy. He was going to probably win this in all likelihood anyway. Save your guy the beating. He will live to fight another day. Good, good call by Alexander's corner. The 31-year-old Cuban Flash Frank Sanchez now 23 and 0 with 16 KOs, and we talked about it up front. He's already passed the big sort of breakthrough test. He had that big fight with Fa Ajagba. It does feel now like it's time to get to that title picture, get to that highest level, and find out what he can do. What are we waiting for? You know, I mean, I, I would imagine not a lot of guys are chomping at the bit to fight for Sanchez. Also a big part of it when you've, right? got, when you've got a Cuban school skilled boxer with, with fast hands, big pop. It's like, let me see. He's got Cuban amateur background, and he's fast, and he's huge, and he's powerful. Yeah, I can understand why guys don't want to fight him, but this is the time. He is absolutely and unequivocally ready for the deeper end of this talent pool. We've already seen him against some of those names and he's done quite well. I'm hoping to see more. Well, Sanchez entered this fight ranked number four by the WBC. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at the fourth round as the corner called a stop to this contest. Therefore, your winner by TKO and now the WBC Continental America's heavyweight champion, Frank the Cuban Flair. Sanchez! Well, if Sanchez came in...